are the Washington Wizards secretly trying to circumnavigate the world longitudinally? It appears that just may be the case after the franchise announced it intends to move from Washington DC down south a few miles to Alexandria, Virginia. You know, when you think about NBA franchises that have switched cities over the years, the Washington Wizards aren't exactly the first side that springs to mind. While the Sacramento Kings have spent 70 some odd years hopping around America like a backpacker traveling through Europe, by the way, been there, done that, not as good as it seems. The team once known as the Bullets will have spent a season in at least six different stadiums should that proposed move come to fruition. That number actually balloons to seven if you add in the games the team played in 1973 at Cole Fieldhouse on the University of Maryland campus as it waited for the Capitol Center to open. Either way, the Washington Wizards have moved an awful lot in their history despite not really going anywhere. I am Cheyenne Hollis, this is The Touchback, and today let's explore the weirdly nomadic history of the Washington Wizards. If the Washington Wizards was one of your friends, they would be that one who always talks about how much they love traveling and exploring the world, but never actually goes anywhere. They'll talk about the exotic culture of the county fair two towns over, Sure, by definition, that is technically traveling, but I mean, come on, that doesn't really count. Back to the Wizards. This is a basketball team that has moved around a ton over the years, and yet, they don't really have a ton of frequent flyer miles to show for it. Whether that is a good thing or a bad thing remains to be seen, but they do get around, just not all that far. The Wizards began life in 1961 as the Chicago Packers. This went poorly, famously so. They played in the International Amphitheater, but that wasn't really the issue here. Naming themselves after the Chicago Bears' biggest rivals, on the other hand, that didn't exactly endear the franchise to locals. The Packers lasted a measly one season in Chicago before the franchise's first relocation. Of course, they didn't need to go far to find a new home. Basically, the team was just like, we're just gonna hit the reset button on everything. New name, new uniforms, and a new stadium in the form of Chicago Coliseum. The newly christened Zephyrs didn't really connect with the local fan base either. 20 second time out here, Zephyrs, an awesome name for a sports team. I don't understand why we don't have a team currently named the Zephyrs. I know there was a AAA ball club in New Orleans called the Zephyrs, but they since rebranded. But yeah, how do you not love the name Zephyrs? As for the Chicago version, a rookie Don Nelson wasn't enough to help the flagging franchise and they decided to skip town entirely. It wasn't all bad news for Chicago basketball fans as the Bulls would eventually set up shop there a few seasons later. After two fairly unsuccessful seasons in Chicago, the franchise packed its bags and headed to Baltimore. This in the franchise history of the Baltimore, Washington, Bullets, Wizards, Zephyrs, Packers, whatever you want to call them, is really the equivalent to an overnight school trip. This is their one big trip that they have taken in their lifetime. Really, it's pretty much the only time the side has traversed more than 40 miles in search of a place to play. They would go on to spend 10 years in Baltimore before deciding they actually wanted to be closer to Washington DC. However, they didn't want to actually be in Washington DC. The Capital Center, annoyingly spelled with the British variant of the word center, opened in 1973 with the newly named Capital Bullets calling this facility home that was some 37 miles away from the team's previous home in Baltimore. So about those capital bullets, apparently they just sort of liked what the Golden State Warriors did and not actually picking a specific location, but a vague region that could claim really anything as its own territory. Unlike the Golden State Warriors though, the capital bullets moniker did not stick and after one season they just simply went and became the Washington Bullets. 
As for that new arena, well, the Capital Center was your typical cookie cutter arena built in American suburbs in the 1970s. In other words, it was a total, complete dump. Also, for the record, Landover, Maryland is just not a nice place and it is not a convenient place for anyone to get to. It was just flat out too far away for fans from Baltimore to commute to and really people in Washington DC, given just how the roads are structured there, wanted nothing to do with a trip out to the suburbs in Landover, Maryland because it was just a hassle. Although, if we're being honest, driving anywhere in that part of the country is a hassle, regardless of the time, regardless of the season, regardless of anything like that. It's just, it's a bad place to be a driver. Somehow the team did manage to survive in Landover for more than 20 years, although it did play a few games in Baltimore from time to time. Eventually though, Washington Wizards ownership located and secured a site in Washington DC proper for the team to call home. In 1997, the team began to play in what was then known as the MCI Center. With an MCI reference, that means I now have to dust off the Looney Tunes Michael Jordan collaboration we don't ever actually talk about. <laughs> It must be my cherie. Here, though. It's probably for me. It's MCI Five Cent Sunday. Remember, today is MCI Five Cent Sunday. The day you can jingle these bells for just five cents a minute. It's MCI Five Cent Sunday. If you're not an MCI customer, call 1 800 Sundays. How MCI spent a ton of money on securing both Michael Jordan and the licensing of Looney Tunes to make a commercial that was so utterly boring is absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, we don't even call it the MCI Center anymore. The Wizards, of course, play in Capital One Arena. This has been a fine home for the franchise for 25 seasons. I've not actually been inside, I've never been able to see a game from Capital One Arena, although I have walked around it, and it's a pretty snazzy facility, all things considered. I don't know if my opinion would change had I been able to go inside, but it's a good location in DC, although DC is always a nightmare to get around, and I think, you know, at least aesthetically from the exteriors, it still looks pretty modern, it looks new, it really is a, a nice part of Washington DC in terms of just walking around. Does it need to be replaced? I don't know. I don't have an answer for that. Obviously, sports teams always think they need a new stadium. That's just how sports owners work. I personally didn't see it as being particularly outdated. It didn't look like, you know, Arco Arena back in 2015. It didn't look like some of the older arenas we have come across over the years. So I can't, I, I don't think. Let's put it that way. I don't think the Wizards really need a new place to play, but of course, logic doesn't dictate those decisions. What brings us to this? Apparently, city life wasn't all it was cracked up to be for the Wizard, and they are now looking to move once again back out to the suburbs. In true Wizards tradition, the franchise is actually heading further southward, this time on to Virginia. The mooted Potomac Yard site the new Wizards Arena is going to be built at, it's only like six miles away from Capital One Arena, although it must, it must be said, getting from Washington DC to anywhere six miles away in rush hour is basically a non-starter. I mean, that arena might as well be on the moon for Washington DC residents trying to get to a 7.05 p.m. tip off. Another thing about this potential wizard stadium in Northern Virginia should certainly be addressed. Building any sports facility at a rail yard site is a terrible idea. Ask anyone in Sacramento about trying to build a stadium at a rail yards site. It's a bad idea and you're better off finding a different location. Just saying here, people. Assuming the new Wizards Arena does get built in Northern Virginia and the team does begin play there in 2028, that'll be the franchise's sixth, count it, sixth different venue in 67 years of existence. This is undoubtedly a lot. 
What makes it all the more peculiar is the fact all but one of these sojourns have been of the cross town variety. This, by the way, is the basketball equivalent of the college kid who switches apartments every semester because they find something absolutely minuscule that they just think doesn't work for them. The microwave's too close to the sink, can't live here, gotta move. Oh, this second floor is too high, can't live here, gotta move. I mean, it just, it's, it's not, it's not a good look. There is also a very interesting trend here that we have to highlight. The Washington Wizards, Baltimore Bullets, this, in, this NBA franchise, it is slowly sliding down the Eastern Seaboard at a glacial pace. By 2060, they'll probably have made it to Fredericksburg. In 2100, by the way, that is so awkward to say the year 2100, but by that year, well, I think the Wizards will probably be playing in Richmond, Virginia. And once the year 3000 is here, I mean, maybe the Wizards or whatever they're called will be in, I don't know, South Carolina, potentially North Florida. I don't really know how the moves will work and what the timeline is, but yeah, they're just going to keep going and going and going. I mean, maybe by like the year 4000, they'll just be playing in the Caribbean Sea. The Washington Wizards are a weirdly nomadic franchise, slowly but steadily circumnavigating the globe longitudinally. Should they move from DC to Alexandria? I don't know. I personally don't think so. I don't think their arena problems are as big as they are making them out to be, but it again, the franchise moves and it moves really close to where it was originally playing. So for being honest, going from Washington DC to Alexandria would be a very on brand move for those Washington Wizards. That does it for me. I am Cheyenne Hollis. This is the touchback and as always hashtag take it out to the 25.